Hey everyone, I um, wanted to put a couple of videos out tonight to address some questions that we're seeing repeatedly through social media. Um, so again, first I want to say if you have questions, please continue to lob them at us. Uh, both Twitter and Instagram work great. Um, we do have someone on our team that's kind of checking on those things and um, our, our whole team is basically working full-time on this project at this point. So we have an entire team of, of analysts um, who are night and day kind of divided into different work streams that vary from looking at the drug studies, looking at the leading mortality indicators, uh, looking at the epidemiology. Um, and in this case, one of the things we're focusing on is testing. And that's kind of the first thing I wanted to touch on this evening because I think it's creating a ton of confusion. And truthfully, if I'm going to be critical, and I'm trying my best to just not look backwards and only look forwards, but if I'm gonna be critical of one thing that we've sort of um, done a lousy job of, it's testing. Um, we should have been far more prepared for this. Uh, we had a template to go off. And I don't just mean that literally in the form of PCR, which I'll allude to in a second, but more importantly, we knew exactly what this virus looked like, and we knew exactly what test kit we could have used to have done this. It still isn't clear to me why the CDC felt the need to try to make their own test kit, uh, something I'll talk about in a second that, that I think cost us a lot of time and frankly didn't make a bunch of sense to me. So um, how does this whole thing work? So about the, within about a week, maybe a couple of weeks after the first patient was identified in Wuhan, the entire genome of this novel coronavirus was sequenced. Um, and once you have that information, you can now develop a test. And I'm sure many of you have heard of something called PCR or polymerase chain reaction. Um, and as its name suggests, it's a chain reaction. So you take DNA that's identified and you um, make RNA out of it and you can amplify that. Um, and so this amplification works geometrically because if you took one strand, you could make two copies and then two could make four and four could make eight and eight could make 16. And if you've been paying attention to exponential growth, you'll realize how quickly that number gets huge. And again, there's details on this. There's quantitative PCR, there's RT-PCR. Um, I think that the details on this are probably not as important as the big picture. The big picture is the, for reasons I still don't understand, and I apologize if I'm insulting anyone at the CDC, it's not my intention, but I'm struggling to understand why the CDC decided to create their own test in-house. Their own test was a disaster. It had a very low sensitivity and a very low specificity, which in another video, I think after this, I'll make the explanation of why you must have high sensitivity and high specificity if you're going to do this type of testing because of these things called negative and positive predictive value. Um, but I believe that basically the CDC test was ditched and then the FDA kind of moved into something called emergency use, use authorization, EUA, which was basically something done, I think, correctly on the part of the um, secretary of HSS, Human Health Services, to, to say, look, we're going to lower the standard for what is required to do this testing. And again, there's technical details here that um, I'll probably expand on in a podcast, but I think for the purpose of this video, I don't want to get into, which is you could, you know, basically use fewer samples and go from using two primers to one primer in exchange for going more quickly. I think where I'm frustrated is the following. Um, there's at least one company that has already done a million of these tests worldwide, uh, obviously many of them in China, and they can do it at a very low cost and they can do it at a very high sensitivity and specificity. The reports I'm reading say 98% sensitivity, greater than 95, probably 96% specificity. Um, for reasons I don't understand, we have elected not to go with that company in the United States, um, and we've instead gone with another company called Roche. Uh, the first, the company I was referring to earlier is called BGI, a company in China. Um, and so we've selected a company that is very far behind in their ability to do this. And it's not to say that Roche isn't a great company. It's not to say that Roche couldn't produce these um, primers and roll out these tests at scale if given enough time. But of course, time is of the essence. And personally, my belief is that if we stay the course of relying on the Roche test and some of these other um, decentralized testing modes around it, um, I think we're going to lose a lot of critical time, and time really matters a lot here. 
because the more quickly you can identify people who are positive and quarantine them, or people who are negative and do so with a high degree of confidence and therefore tell them that they're not infectious, um, the safer you can get this thing under control. And there's been no shortage of people talking about this concept of flattening the curve, flattening the curve. And you hear this a lot, which basically says, look, if you're, you know, if you're going to have a hundred thousand people get exposed to it, they could either be exposed to it in a month or they could be exposed to it in a year. Same number of people, same area under the curve, but you stress spread it out and that makes all the difference. And all of that's entirely true. But one of the most important pieces of flattening the curve is slowing the rate of transmission. And one of the most important ways to slow the rate of transmission is to accurately be able to identify people who have it and don't have it, especially if their symptoms are not entirely clear. So I'm harping on this because I don't think testing is very sexy. And many of the questions that people are asking are about drugs and what about this drug and what about that drug? And, and we're gonna talk about that stuff at another point in time and I'm gonna to allude to, to one of those in a moment. But um, I really wanna emphasize this thing, which is, Hopefully the states are going to be able to take over. Hopefully the states are going to be able to um, use any tests that they want and not just have to rely on the Roche kit or any of the other um, narrowly approved kits under the EUA. Um, so that's kind of what I want to say on testing. And then I'll um, turn this over and talk in a moment about sensitivity and specificity.